Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Our region's business. Innovation. Transformation. Momentum. Improving our communities and driving technologies that will shape our region for generations. The collaboration that brings vitality, prosperity, and life to living. Stay with us for the coming half hour as we examine in depth our region's business. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on our region's business, you know the old saying, cash is king? Well, we'll share a few tips for small and mid-sized business owners on managing their cash flow. Plus, Canada is popping up right here in our region. We'll find out why our neighbors to the north chose Pittsburgh to pilot a new approach to partnership. But first, there's no more waiting until next year. Major League Baseball is back on the field, and a professor from right here in our region plays a key role every year in making it all happen. He's got the algorithm that makes it possible to create the Major League schedule. Michael Trick is Senior Associate Dean at the Tepper School of Business at Carnegie Mellon University, and welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you very much, Bill. Delighted to be here today. Yeah, this is wild to think the whole schedule gets set out of, uh, out of our region. Now, your, your, your specialty at, at Tepper and at CMU is operations research. How does that fit into creating the Major League Baseball schedule? Well, operations research is a field involved with trying to create optimal decisions, trying to make better decisions along the way. We create mathematical models of decisions problems we solve those models and then ideally we're able to implement them in reality we teach this in our MBA program at the Tepper school where I teach and we can use it in lots and lots of applications sports scheduling is one of them all right well I, I assume was there a journey into baseball I can't imagine it was the first thing you started to do when you got into this, this specialty no this all all starts back in the uh, in the mid 90s when I was talking with one of my MBA students and we were talking about how uh, this world of operations research can solve all sorts of problems. It turned out he worked for the Pirates and one of the people he worked with uh, was named Doug Bierman. And a little while later, Doug had left the Pirates and started into consulting. He wanted to schedule Major League Baseball. but. He knew a lot about baseball, not much about scheduling. <laughs> he had heard that I knew something about scheduling. I knew something about baseball, but not like Doug did. And so we got together, and he could tell me what baseball was looking for. I could try to put it in my models. I could try to do optimization, and we could try to work towards a schedule. Wow, so you started that in the mid-90s, but it wasn't until the mid-aughts, right? 2004, 2005 or 2005 so, 2005 right? was yeah. the first schedule they played. And that was an amazing journey because the schedulers at the time, a, a husband and wife, team uh, who'd worked for Major League Baseball, they turned out to be amazing schedulers. They could create fantastic schedules and it took us a long time for the mathematical models I created to both reflect reality, get what Doug was telling me baseball wanted and what baseball wanted, and also to get it solvable. When I started, it was taking months and months even to schedule just a few weeks of sports. Wow. But over time, computers get faster, algorithms get better, my techniques and the techniques of my partners got better, and stuff that would take two months, we could work in 10 minutes. And that allowed us to start putting the pieces together, and our little company was then able to start creating the, the schedules. They um, started looking really good. Um, they started being competitive with, with the husband and wife team schedules, and then we got better just as computers got better. And, and on and on you go, and, you, and you've done other sports as well, right? Yeah. yeah, that was an important part because about halfway through, you can imagine after 10 years, you wonder, is this I, really going to ever gonna happen? This together, and right, so yeah. what had happened though is halfway through, I had met up with a colleague down at Georgia Tech, and together we had started scheduling college basketball, which turned out to be much easier. Hmm. Fewer teams, much shorter schedule. Uh, there's 2,400. 30 games in Major League Baseball, there might be 100 games in a college uh, schedule. And so we were able to use these same techniques, do a lot of college sports. We continue to do college sports in our company, and, uh, and that allowed us to continue on until we finally hit it big with Major League Baseball. A 2,000 baseball games, well, there's got to be more variables than that. Yeah, actually, the way we put it together, there's about six and a half million variables. Six and a half million? Yeah, we, um, we end up with a variable for every possible road trip anybody could take, any possible homestand. And so we'll have a variable for Pittsburgh going to New York, then Atlanta, then Florida, and we'll figure out whether that's a variable 
what we like? You know, is it at a time when Pittsburgh wants to be on the road? Is it uh, match up with some of the other team requests? And so we generate all possible things. We have about 400,000 constraints to go with it. And then we try to optimize over the entire thing. Now, does Major League Baseball give you parameters? Do the teams give you parameters? I mean, how do they? The teams all fill out this great big form telling us what they like and what they don't like. Uh, many teams like to be at home on Father's Day. Many teams like to be away on Mother's Day. Uh, they just fill out their forms. Uh, it all goes into our system. Um, it changes over time. Uh, sometimes there'll be a rock concert coming through and uh, there might not be a stadium availability at a particular time and so we have to keep that into play. For the most part we schedule fairly early in the process and so a lot of the other sports the NFL will schedule around us. We have got to leave holes for the NFL to schedule into but uh, you don't want the Steelers and the Pirates playing the same day uh, I here in Pittsburgh, even though they have separate stadia. Uh, as you know, the parking is all pretty well in common, the beer vendor security. It's very complicated if they try to play at the same time. And so we leave holes for uh, some of the other sports. And it really does change that much from year to year, because I would think with a fixed number of teams, you know, once you've got it figured out, you can just kind of keep doing it. It does change quite a bit from year to year. Yeah. And so a big star might be retiring, and so they might want to have the final day, uh, final game at their home place. Um, we also have these issues with things like Father's Day, where if you don't have Father's Day one year, you'll definitely want to have it the next year. And so we have to rotate these things around. Uh, and uh, and uh, well, Texas changed leagues, right? In the last couple of years, that had to have been a big deal. Yeah, when Houston moved, this was enormous. This was the great day for people in scheduling. <laughs> because uh, what that did is that put 15 teams in the American League and 15 teams in the National League. Up till then, we pretty well could schedule the two leagues separately. There were 14 and 16. Now with 15 and 15, there's an odd number. There has to be interleague play at all times. We're really now scheduling the full 30 at once. And this was uh, a, an enormous change in our processes and what we had to do. Well, so, and that's really what drove that we now see these interleague teams so much more often than we used to a few years ago. And that was really what drove it, what's driven this big change. Uh, that's right. And yeah. so uh, trying to even things off has meant um, uh, certainly more interleague play scattered throughout the, this season. Only a second left, but I got to ask you, why did the Pirates start on March 31st this year? It feels like it should be April. Well, if you try to back it out from the Game 7 of the World Series and you back it all the way out, you end up getting just a little bit into March this year. Okay, so there we are. Well, at any rate, it's still great to have, uh, have the ball club back uh, and to know that it's all architected out of our region as well. Michael, Michael Trick from the Tupper School at Carnegie Mellon, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Next up, Canada is setting up shop in downtown Pittsburgh. We'll find out why when our region's business continues.